come to the final chapter of this year's After Dark Offerings with a 1984 cult classic that is just as popular today as it was when it was released three decades ago. It's time to grab your proton packs, wail the siren of Ecto-1, and ask the same question that we've all been asking for 30 years. Who are you going to call? Harold Ramis and Dan Aykroyd are both geniuses when they put together the script for Paranormal, Investigators, and Exterminators. Essentially, pest control, but on ghosts. What makes this story work is the camaraderie between the actors and the satire and wit that could only come from Bill Murray. The characters are well developed with their own mannerisms and it's especially amusing when Egon is subtly telling Peter to up the bill for the capture of Slimer. The Walter Peck character is a guy you just love to hate as he does nothing but try to sabotage the Ghostbusters operation on environmental grounds which was attributed to Dr. Venkman's arrogance in not letting Peck see the containment grid. But to William Atherton's credit, he is good at playing a jerk. Yes, it's true. This man has no dick. What I especially feel was a good aspect of the flick is the sense of escalation and advancement. As the Ghostbusters are working their way up in business with catching more ghosts to media coverage, so is the situation with Dana Barrett's apartment that is being haunted by Zool and the gateway for Gozer. Peter Venkman is pretty much a clown that everyone loves, as he does not take anything he says too seriously and seemingly makes a joke out of everything. One thing has to be said, when you're eight or nine years old, when you first see this movie, this line... That's the bedroom, but nothing ever happened in there. What a crime. ...doesn't register with you, but as an adult you understand that it's a sexual reference to which Dana Barrett does not appreciate. In a similar vein to the line when Zool has taken Dana over. Do you want this body? Is this a trick question? I think had Bill not played Dr. Venkman, then I don't think that role would have been as loved, nor would the movie. As Murray is the mouth and comedy of this flick to counteract Ray and Egon's more serious take on the events in the movie. You've earned it. Ray is the heart of the Ghostbusters, with his infectious enthusiasm and youthful zest for life. Kennedy's. We could really bust some heads. In a spiritual sense, of course. Ray is that character that just wants to know more about what can be learned through ghostbusting, which is akin to a child learning fascinating details about a chosen subject or history of their hero in life. That's great! Actual physical contact! Dan was the right choice to play Dr. Stats. He has the same aspiration for science as Egon, but his is much more childlike and enthusiastic, and Dan's performance shows this brilliantly. Egon is the mind and the wisdom of the team. He is the only one with the really sober approach of the practices of ghostbusting, with the science and mathematics that are applied to it. He is as cautious as he is fascinated about the paranormal, which is highlighted in the first call. There's something very important I forgot to tell you. Don't cross the streams. Try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Harold's performance just brought that character to life with the sensibilities he conveyed as a scientist. Egon may not have been a jokester like Venkman or had the zest for life like Ray, but as a Ghostbuster, you were glad he was on the team.
Winston is the common sense of the team, as he just calls things as he sees them, and he is really the audience's participation in the movie who are looking into the story, as he is the only Ghostbuster who is not a scientist. Personally, I think it would have been better if Winston had been introduced much earlier in the flick, as Ernie was brought in halfway and didn't have as much time to develop his character comparatively to his other co-stars. But for the little amount of time that Ernie was on screen, he made his character likeable and relatable to the audience, as he was looking in just like they were with these scientists that set up their own ghost-catching enterprise. The leading female and the seemingly love interest of Dr. Peter Venkman. Sigourney plays the role of a witness who doesn't understand why these events are happening around her. It's almost in a similar approach to Winston representing the audience as she's looking in at this story, but the difference being that she's targeted along with her neighbor, Louis Tully, played by Rick Moranis, and becomes part of this event that would likely bring the end of the world. Even by 2014 standards, this movie is able to make the ghosts and the use of the proton packs and ecto traps look authentic long before CG became a main staple in Hollywood. The use of the proton packs whenever they would miss their intended target would do such significant property damage when you see the singe marks that it would leave on the tables and chairs in the ballroom scene. Even seeing the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man walk through New York was a sight to take in as I don't think anything like that had been attempted before in special and visual effects. Elmer Bernstein composed the score for the first movie, which was reused in the Ghostbusters video game in 2009 by Atari, which marked the franchise's 25th anniversary. The score is very likeable and quirky when it has these more light-hearted moments, and has this eerie and tense feel whenever the darker elements come into play, like on the first call at the Sedgwick Hotel when they're searching for Slimer, and to the battle against Gozer and the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. What is there to say about an iconic movie that everybody knows and quotes? You've got to try this pole. That's a big Twinkie. Don't cross the streams. It's dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. There are some movies that don't have the same appeal or legendary status over time. Thankfully, Ghostbusters has that same appeal today as it did yesteryear. Like other classic movies from the 80s, like Back to the Future, Top Gun, and Batman, you can watch it again and again and again and it never gets old. And with the third movie on the horizon for 2018, it looks like we'll be seeing Ecto-1 ride again along with the name Ghostbusters still burning bright. Sadly, it will be without Harold Ramis, who unfortunately passed away on February 24th, early this year. He will be sorely missed. Ghostbusters gets a legendary must. Until next year, good night from After Dark.